Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Dill. One of the games that we've had marked on the calendar since the months of January, them Georgia Bulldogs, Clemson Tigers, doing a little bit of a roster battle, not necessarily a preview and prediction, but more just seeing how these two teams stack up from each other, going to go position group by position group. Extremely excited to get into this one. Before we do, and as always, just want to say, Thank you to you guys and a massive shout out to both the Georgia and Clemson fans. Whether we're talking these programs on the recruiting trail, doing position deep dives, I mean, it's been a blast for the boys. The amount of support y'all have shown truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, but much more importantly, let it fly in the comment section. Whether you disagree or agree with the fellas, whether you're getting mixed up with the Georgia or Clemson fans, let it fly. That's what college football is about. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas and Dill. Let me get, kick this one off to you. And let's start on the defensive side of the football where, I mean, I think these both these teams have top five defenses in my mind heading into the season. Starting on the defensive line, Georgia, Clemson, who we got? I'm going to go slightly into Clemson, and, and I think it's close. I mean, Georgia's really good defensive line. I don't think they were as good as we've seen them in the past, and Honestly, you're probably hoping more for like some of those younger guys to take a step and play really good, like your Christian Miller or Jordan Hall. I mean, those guys look like they have a lot of potential, but I mean, you look at what Clemson put out there last year with TJ Parker really showing a lot. Obviously, Peter Woods really dominant too. I mean, those two for sophomores, which you have coming in with them. And frankly, I think the middle of that defense is going to be really good. If you kind of watch Clemson towards the end of the year, I mean, you started to see DeMonte Capehart play really dominant football. I thought Peyton Page looked really good as well. I think this Clemson, I think they have a little bit higher ceiling, a couple more difference makers than those two young guys, and that's probably what gives me the edge. But George is ultra talented. I mean, I'm looking for some guys to step up. For that's me. where I have it, where it's like, okay, as we're sitting right now, I'm going to go with Clemson too because I thought you saw a better defensive line last year for the Clemson Tigers. The guys you said, Peter Woods kicking out to the edge position. I mean, Peter Woods, TJ Parker, I'm not sure it gets much better as your edge rushers. And you said it on the inside. I think a lot of people assume this Clemson defensive line losing Tyler Davis, losing Ruko is going to take a step back. You look at those guys that you shouted out. Very, very good. Now, I'm taking Clemson right now with the confidence of about zero out of 10, because you look at this Georgia defensive line and I said, it it has the potential to be dominant. We know what Kirby smart does on the recruiting trail, but I've been extremely vocal. Kirby smart's been vocal. And I know a lot of Georgia fans in the comment section have been vocal as well, that they weren't the game records that we normally expect from Georgia up front, but I'll say they have the guys, right? Whether it's Mikel Williams taking that step that we expected, whether it's guys like Jordan Haller, Christian Miller, Jalen Walker, my guy, Damon Wilson. They have the guys to be one of, if not the best defensive line, but they didn't totally show it in 2023. So I'm going to take Clemson with the slight lean right now. Very little confidence in that pick going to the linebacker position. And Dill, I'm going to start it off because I know you're going to start it with a hot take. So I'm going to get ahead of this. This Georgia linebacker room, this is no knock on Clemson where you have guys like Barry Carter. I'm a huge fan of Wade Wood as obviously true freshman Sammy Brown. I don't think you could find a better linebacker room in the country than what Georgia has. Not only Munden coming back, but what you saw from C.J. Allen as a true freshman, guys like Raylan Wilson, Justin Williams coming in as a true freshman, not only from a starter perspective, but from a depth perspective. I mean, Dill, you're talking about maybe six NFL guys in that linebacker room right now at Athens. And that is – I mean, when you get in, and I might, I think I'm the lean Clemson, frankly, just because I love Barrett Carter. I think the fact that they're getting him back, I mean, that's a tier, tier one linebacker. And the guy, frankly, I don't even know that he played as well as he can play. I mean, that's Great. ultra talent in that body. I love that he's coming back for his senior year because I think there's a lot more. I think he could be the best linebacker on the field come that game. And frankly, I think Wood has like it being slept on in a little same way that other guys on Clemson are like, when you saw him get his shot, he played really well. And again, the question is the depth on this Clemson linebacker room. Again, like guys coming in, Sandy Brown, obviously. But other than him, like you're not necessarily super excited about maybe what you have behind that. But I love those two at the top. And, and frankly, that's probably because just that high end play that I think they can give. Again, George, a much deeper room. But I think at the top, Clemson might have. And the Clemson fans know I'm not hitting on this linebacker room because I have been banging the table for Wade Wood as pretty much all spring long. It's just I think you're going up against 
arguably the best linebacker room, not only in the country, but still, I could see us looking back on this linebacker room, like take a screenshot and say, yeah, five years from now, you got a couple all pros in that linebacker room for Georgia. Because CJ Allen could easily make me my words like immediately. Cause like, yes, he, he, could. he started to show some things that like, Oh, this guy's a little different. I mean that like you talk about top end talent, if he kind of takes a step and develops into what he has, I mean, you're, we're taught like there's not going to be many better linebackers playing college football. Yeah. And I'll yeah. say this. I might even be higher on Raylan Wilson in terms of the projectable future that he has. It's it's a loaded room. Now, going to the, the, the corner, or I should say the secondary, it's hard not to go with Georgia. Clemson has an extremely young secondary that you're excited about, but you talk about Georgia. and what I mean, I think they might have the best defensive back purely in the country in Malachi starts. You talk about the depth they have at cornerback, not only – with some of those starters, but you have a guy like Ellis Robinson coming in as a true freshman. Sounds like he might be a real role player in this Georgia defensive back room. Then you have Joe Nell Aguero coming in to play that star. I like Clemson. I think they're young and talented, but I think it's just too many names for me not to go with the Georgia Bulldogs in that secondary. Room. Yeah. And I'm totally with you on that. I mean, you look, bring back two really big, really physical athletic corners. I mean, you love what you have there, and, and, and you're right. At the end of the day, Malachi Starks, we've been talking about him now for two years. I mean, he's that guy. He's as good as any safety in the country, probably the best one for my money. It, it, it Georgia does have better secondary in my eyes. Now, I, that is one of those I don't, I don't know how close it is, and that's not saying Clemson's bad. I just look like Georgia might have the best secondary in the country. Year. I caught a lot of flack last year for saying I thought Georgia's secondary was better than their front seven heading in. And I mean, maybe I was wrong because the linebackers are so good for Georgia, but I feel like everyone talks about Georgia's defensive line, their front seven, because that's kind of where they put their stamp as just dominating college football along the trenches. Nobody talks about that secondary. That secondary last year was absolutely insane for Georgia. It's going to be really good again next year. Dilly, you're looking at two of the best defenses in the country, in my mind, coming in to 2024. Going to the offensive side of the football, let's start with the most important position on the football field, the quarterback room. You got K. Klubnik, who I think, I think you're going to see some steps in the right direction, but I don't think anyone, including Clemson fans, are not going to go with Carson Beck here at that quarterback spot. No, and Carson Beck came in and played so much better, and I think Georgia fans could have even hoped. I mean, really, yeah, put a stamp as a, like, very much that high end talent, and, and it's not that game manager. I feel like people for Georgia, a lot of times, like outside fans are like, Oh, all they're gonna have is some average guy who's just gonna keep the ball moving. I mean, the way they were able to push the ball down the field with back, it, he's really, really good, can do everything you want as a quarterback. I, again, you got to see some steps from Cade Klubnik to put him up in that league of, of where Carson Beck is. 100% agree. And I'll, I'll put my hand up. I've been putting my hand up pretty much since the fall of last year saying, yeah, Carson Beck won the job because he can run the Georgia offense and be that game manager that Kirby Smart wants. Yes, he can run the Georgia offense. He is certainly not a game manager. Like, you go back and watch that 2023 film. That Those are NFL caliber throws that Carson Beck was making. I, Dill, I said this, I'll say it again. If you're asking me right now, you can take any quarterback to go into 2024 with, I think I'm taking Carson Beck. And I, I, I am really eyeing on what Carson Beck can do heading into 2024. Now, going to the wider receiver room, I feel like you got it. We'll go, let's lump it in and say pass catchers because we got to include tight ends because both programs have very good tight ends as well. I'm going to go with the lean, not the lean. I'll probably just take Georgia outright here. Dominic Lovett, Dylan Bell, Ra Ra Thomas. You add guys like Colby Young and London Humphrey in the transfer portal. As it sits right now, there's just more proven production in that Georgia wide receiver room. And you look at Clemson, they have a ton of talent. We've been talking about that all spring practice for Clemson. The amount of potential that you have guys like Tyler Brown and Antonio Williams, who you've seen it from. And then you have guys like Brian Wesco and TJ Moore who are coming in as true freshmen. Clemson has a lot of a lot of ceiling to their wide receiver room. But right now, what, April 2nd, post-April Fool's Day, you got to take the Georgia Bulldogs with that pass catching room. And my thing is, I just think George is more complete. I mean, you look, I like with some of what Clemson has, especially guys who can work over the middle. I mean, Williams and Brown, I really liked how they played last year. They just don't have that guy who really scares you downfield. And again, Adam Randall, he feels like a guy who could turn into that. TJ Moore, I know yeah. you've been harping on for a long time in this offseason, a guy who's got the physical traits to do it, but somebody's got to put some fear into teams. 
it downfield for Clemson. And I just think you look at Georgia, I mean, so complete, bringing in those two transfer wideouts. I mean, those are real good vertical threats. You already knew they had guys who could work the middle. I mean, you think Dominic Lovett, Rara Thomas, really good polished receivers, and then that tight end room. I just think Georgia, if you look, a far more complete unit. And that's what holds me back from thinking Clemson's kind of like in that really elite tier of wide receivers is they just don't have that guy who really puts fear in you as the number one. Yeah, we said I was at 6.9 yards per pass at time for Clemson, astronomically low. They need a guy that can stretch the field. And I, I said this before, if Clemson finds that guy, you're looking at an offense that I think takes massive strides in 2020. Well, you're a really complete room after that because you look Brenning Stool. I mean, he's really, really good at tight end. I'm, I mean, we talk a lot about Michigan, Georgia tight ends. I mean, we got to talk about Brenning Stool. When you talk right. about some of the better tight ends in the country, He's right there with anyone, really good hands, really good getting downfield. But, I, yeah, at the end of the day, it's about that number one vertical wide receiver threat for Clemson in my mind. Offensive line. Well, let's go to the running back room first where I think a lot of people across the country are going to take Georgia. Obviously, the injection of Trevor Etienne, you got some depth there as well. You're bringing a lot of talent through the uh, 2024 class. I love Phil Moffat. I'm going to take Georgia because I think the I think Trevor Etienne's a dog. I've been saying that all year, but also like the depth in that running back room. But still, Phil Moffat, I think a lot of attention went to Will Shipley. You go back to 2023, I think Phil Moffat was the better player for Clemson. I really like Phil Moffat. You have some question marks about running back two and running back three. So I'm going to lean Georgia, but I do want to give a shout out, a little love to my guy, Phil Moffat, who I, I really do think – is going to be very good for Clemson heading into 2024. Yeah, no, Phil Maffa, he's, I mean, he's really, really good. He, it's just like, you're, I think you're right. At the end of the day, you look, George, you just feel a lot more comfortable about the guys coming up. And Trevor Etienne and Maffa, they'll be really tight, really, really good number ones, I think. I just think you kind of feel just the way George has recruited that position and developed that position, you probably just feel more comfortable just like before the season starts with them getting a guy like Branson Robinson going or some of these other talented backs they have. Now, going to the offensive line, I, I think you, you go Georgia here because I think Georgia has that top-end talent. I think they're a little bit deeper than Clemson. Dill, I look at this Clemson offensive line, and I think it was really good last year. Outside of like Mitchell Mays, and I, again, I don't mean to keep shouting out Mitchell Mays, but you go back to watch Clemson, I thought that offense – specifically the offensive line, was pretty damn good, and they return a lot of guys that have played a ton of football. I mean, I remember talking about this Clemson offensive line 24 months ago, saying, hey, this is a young group, but it's a talented group. Now these guys are all kind of within this program going into year three, year four, year five. I like this Clemson offensive line, but you look at NFL talent, and I feel like you got to give the lean to the Georgia Bulldogs here especially returning the guys that are going to return. I mean, Trust, Tate Ratledge, I, I mean, he's been so solid for them for a little while. You just are a deeper unit. And again, just played better. And you're, you're kind of right. Clemson towards the end of the year, once they found their starting five and you saw some guys like Colin Sadler get more playing time and Harris Sewell, some of their young guys, like they started playing a lot better towards the end of the year. But again, Georgia was just, they were kind of wire to wire, really dominant, really good up front. And again, Clemson, like, I do think people are probably going to sleep on how good that offensive line can be because you're right. The lows of Clemson's offensive line were low. I mean, that Miami game, that's about as bad as you'll see an offensive line play. And again, probably a lot of it was that right guard spot. They really had trouble figuring that out all year. But like you look, I mean, when they started to inject some of those younger players, it really started to tighten up. I thought they played really good against Notre Dame, a very tough run seven. I think this Clemson offensive line, it's going to be no joke this year. But at the end of the day, what George has done for the last like four or five years, it feels like on offensive line. I mean, they've been developing an absolute unit. And they just recruit that position so well. It's something Kirby Smart just, I mean, as many big bodies as he can take, we're going to try to develop as many as we can. And I mean, it's a process that's working for Kirby Smart from a roster construction standpoint. And the last thing I'd say is that they got a lot of veterans, but they also got a lot of young talent that's going to be pushing. Like a guy like Monroe Freeling, Crazy to say he might not start for Georgia. I think this guy starts on a lot of other programs across the country. Dill, this game is going to be extremely fun. I think you're looking at two elite defenses. We probably give the edge to Georgia on offense right now. we got the Clemson spring game on Saturday. Going to get a taste of what this Clemson offense looks like. Extremely excited for this one. We're going to talk about this game from a lot of different angles over the next couple months. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas again. All the support means the world if y'all do enjoy the content. 
consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later.